Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are interested in this sum. N is a positive integer. M is from 1 to 2n minus 1. The sum is sine pi m squared divided by 2n. And then in the denominator, we have sine pi m over 2n. The key to obtaining this sum is to use this summation here, which is a geometric series. Sum v from a to b, e to the i, 2 pi f v, where f is a real number that is not an integer. Let's evaluate the sum. The first term is e to the i, 2 pi f a. Then we have 1 minus e to the i, 2 pi f. And this is raised to the power the number of terms in the sum, which is b minus a plus 1. In the denominator, we have 1 minus e to the i, 2 pi f. From here, we can extract e to the i pi f. Now we have e to the minus i pi f minus e to the i pi f. In the numerator, we have e to the i 2 pi f a, 1 minus e to the i pi f, 2 b minus 2 a plus 2. This is minus 2 i sine pi f. We can join this exponential here and write down this one as e to the i pi f, 2 a minus 1. If we multiply this here, we get e to the i by f 2a minus 1 minus e to the i by f. And then this 2b minus 2a plus 2, we have also minus 2a plus 1. So this becomes 2b plus 1. We can multiply the numerator and denominator by minus 1, and we get this result here. This result allows us to have a sign in the denominator. Also in the numerator, we can construct a sign. And note that by choosing f, let's say to contain m, and choosing parameters a or b to contain m, we can get something like m squared. What we will do exactly is that we will use this double sum, small m from 1 to n minus 1, small g from 1 to m, and then e to the i 2 pi m over nj, e to the minus i 2 pi m over n, plus e to the i 2 pi m over nj, this term again, but now it is multiplied by e to the i by j over n. Let's evaluate the inner sum. When we sum this term, this part here does not depend on the index j. And now we have something that we can match to our summation here. f is m over n, a is equal to 1, and b is equal to m. We can apply this formula and write it down here. Regarding this term, we are summing with respect to j. Let's combine these two exponentials. We have e to the i 2 pi j. Then what we will have here is 2m plus 1 over 2n. f now is 2m plus 1 over 2n. A is equal to 1 because we start our summation from 1 and B is equal to M. The maximum value of J is M. Again, apply the formula and this is what we get. After some manipulation, we get this summation. Here. Note that we have M squared by in the summation of interest, but still things do not very much look like what we need. The trick here is to first go back to this double sum and swap M and J. We rename J as M and M as J. So this is done here. Then we interchange the order of summation. In this double sum, we are summing j from 1 to n minus 1. m is from 1 to j. What we will do is that we will sum m from 1 to n minus 1. And then we have an inner sum with an index j. Note that here, m goes from 1 to j. So j starts from m. j is m or more. j specifically is from m to the maximum possible value n minus 1. Our double sum is small m from 1 to n minus 1 and j from m to n minus 1. And then we have those exponentials. Let's evaluate the inner sum. For here, we combine the exponentials as e to the i 2 pi j and then 2m minus 1 over 2n. f is equal to 2m minus 1 over 2n. We are summing from a to b. So a in our case here will be m and b will be n minus 1. We use the formula and evaluate the sum. And then we have a term here, this guy does not depend on j. Here we have a term that depends on j. f is m over n. a is equal to m. b is equal to n minus 1. We use the formula and write down the result of this summation here. After some manipulation, we have this expression. What is the point? We started with a double sum. We evaluated the inner sum, and now we got this guy here. We rewrote the double sum by swapping j and m. Then we interchanged the order of summation. And then we have also a sum here, small m from 1 to n minus 1. And then we have this summoned. These two guys must be equal. So we equate these two sums. For this sum, we have this, which is here, and then we have this one, but I write the sum from 1 to n minus 2, which means that I isolate the term in which small m is equal to n minus 1, which is here. For this summation, I write this here, 
And then for this guy, I start the summation from two to n minus one, which means that I isolate the term corresponding to small m equal to one. This is here. We can put all the terms on the left-hand side. What is this term here? This is e to the i pi, 2n minus 1 squared, that's 4n squared minus 4n plus 1, divided by 2n minus e to the i pi, 2n minus 1 over 2n. This exponential is e to the i pi, 2n minus i, 2 pi, then we have i pi over 2n. This is exactly equal to i pi over 2n, because e to the i, 2 pi times an integer is equal to 1. Here, we have minus e to the i pi, 2n over 2n, and then we have e to the minus i pi over 2n. E to the i pi is equal to minus 1. So this minus sign is a change to a plus sign. And then we have e to the minus i pi over 2n. These two exponentials are equal to 2 times cosine pi over 2n, which is this term here. And in the denominator, we have sine pi 2n minus 1 over 2n. And this is exactly equal to sine pi 1 over 2n, because we have that sine pi minus theta is equal to sine theta. For this term here, these two exponentials can be written as 2 cosine pi over 2n. To be able to combine this summation with this summation, we replace m here by n plus 1. Now our sum is m plus 1 is equal to 2. Then m starts from 1, like here. And the upper summation limit will be n minus 2 rather than n minus 1. Of course, we need to visit the summand and replace each m by m plus 1 so that we are able to combine this sum with that sum. After doing the change, we can see that this exponential is here is exactly like this one. So we get this guy multiplied by 2. From here, we have this minus e to the i pi 2m plus 1 over 2n. And when this with the minus sign goes to the other side, it is e to the minus i pi 2m plus 1 over 2n. What is this? This is minus 2i sine 2m plus 1 over 2n, which is this term here. This is the situation now after moving all the terms to the left-hand side. And we have 0 on the right-hand side. Multiply both sides by i. Note that in this summation, we have 2m everywhere. When m goes from 1 to n minus 1, this 2m will give us 2, then 4, then 6, all the way to 2n minus 2. The summand here looks exactly like this one. But rather than having 2m, we have 2m plus 1. And m is from 1 to n minus 2. 2m plus 1. If m is equal to 1, this is 3, then 5, then 7, all the way to 2n minus 2 plus 1. And this is 2n minus 3. In other words, rather than having two separate sums, we can have a summation with an index going from 2, which is this number here, to 2n minus 2, which is this number here. This guy will give us the missing terms, 3, 5, 7, all the way to 2n minus 3, the term just before this one. We can combine these two sums as a single sum with an index m from 2 to 2n minus 2. And then here, we can just replace the 2m and 2m plus 1 by m. We have now a summation m from 2 to 2n minus 2, e to the i by m squared over 2n. And in the denominator, we have sine by m over 2n. If we come back to this term, this sign is exactly this sign here. So the summation applied to this term will give us the number of terms in the sum, which is n minus 2. And then we get this i here because we multiply by i. This sum comes when we apply the summation to this minus 1 over 2i sine by 2n over 2n. Recall the isolated terms. Both of them give us 2 cosine by over 2n divided by 2i sine by over 2m. But here this guy is with a minus sign, so it can join the other side, and we have a 2 here. After multiplying by i, this i goes away, and this is the current situation. If we go back to our original sum, we need a sign. It makes sense to take the imaginary part of the left-hand side. This e to the i by m squared over 2n, the imaginary part is sine by m squared over 2n. This summation will disappear because it is purely real. From here, we get minus n minus 2, and this is also purely real. This means that this summation is equal to n minus 2. Our sum of interest is from 1 to 2n minus 1. What are the terms here if a small m is 1 or 2n minus 1? If a small m is equal to 1, we have sine pi over 2n divided by sine pi over 2n. This is 1. 
And if we put m equals to 2n minus 1, we get sine 2 pi n minus 2 pi plus pi over 2n in the numerator. That's pi over 2n. And there is sine pi over 2n in the denominator. So this ratio is also 1. We can add 2 to both sides of this expression. On the right-hand side, we get n. And on the left-hand side, we can write our summation starting from 1 to 2n minus 1. Our sum of interest is equal to n.